So I recently finished up a project called the Lord's Prayer Kaleidoscope, and in this video I spent a lot of time working on these text transitions. I, I, I had the idea that I wanted the text to come on uh, sort of architecturally, sort of uh, like it was building on, kind of mechanically. Um, so I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to do this. And uh, at the end of the project, I was super happy with how it turned out. And I figured I'd share um, this little freebie with you guys uh, so you can use this same sort of transition on your type or uh, any of the other elements in your scene, really. Uh, so this is what we're going to be creating today. Um, it looks a little different than the Lord's Prayer one, uh, but it's the same exact elements. It's just uh, with some different textures and a different look to it. Uh, but you'll be, you'll be able to make that transition look however you want. Uh, so let's jump into this. This is going to be a lot of fun. And oh, uh, Mechanical Maniacs is the name of my new metal band. Uh, we just started about three days ago, and we'll be working on an album that should come out around uh, 2030. So I'll be looking for that. Uh, so let's jump into it. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and download the project files because this has all of our uh, pieces uh, for this um, tutorial inside of it. So once you got that downloaded, bring uh, all the contents of that folder inside of After Effects. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop this, uh, this the file called Vertical Wipe. We're going to drop that into the, a new composition. OK, um, so let's just take a look at this right here. And what this transition is, um, I built it using Particular. Um, and it's basically a wipe. The transition is basically just a wipe, but it, it's a wipe that uses um, these kind of growing squares um, to, uh, to do the wipe. All right, so once we got that um, put into a new comp, um, let's go ahead and drag in our mechanical pieces file. Um, so we got that in there. And this one is pretty big here, so maybe we can scale it down a little bit. I don't think you want to go all the way. I think we want the, the we don't want the pieces to get too small here. Uh, that looks about good there. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and um, add our type. So I'm just going to click on the uh, composition, and I'm just going to write mechanical. OK, so once we've got our text, I can close out these text boxes over here. Don't need this. And just uh, whatever font you use, I'm, I'm using Avenir. Uh, just make sure it's good and kind of blocky looking, because this is going to work best with this uh, transition here. Um, so once you pick out a font, um, I'm going to grow this a little bit and uh, kind of center it a little bit. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Um, and I, I'm just going to change the color of this for now, just so we can tell it apart, because the, the wipe itself is white. And uh, so it'll be our text will get lost here. Um, I'll just make it like a light blue. Uh, we're going to change this color later. This is just for now. OK, so once we've got these pieces, I'm going to turn off my, my uh, type right there. Um, now, uh, the first thing that I want to do is I want to do a track mat on the uh, mechanical pieces of the vertical wipe above it. So uh, you want to make sure you see these track mat options. And if you don't, uh, hit F4 on your keyboard. And that toggles between your switches and your modes there. Um, so once you can see the track mat option there, uh, select mechanical pieces, uh, go to track mat, alpha mat, vertical wipe, uh, which should be above it. Uh, we'll select that. OK, so now if I do a little uh, RAM preview here, um, now those mechanical pieces are using the, uh, the luminance of, or I should say the alpha of the vertical wipe above it. And uh, so this is the first phase of the transition that we're going to be working on. Um, because the transition, actually, it, it has two steps to it. So this is the first step. OK, so that's looking good there. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, work on the second phase of this uh, transition. So I'm going to select the vertical wipe, and I'm going to hit Command-D to duplicate it. I'm going to turn on the eyeball for this so we can see it now. And uh, what I'm going to want to do right now is I'm going to want to pre-compose this text right here. And the reason why I want to pre-compose this is uh, this is going to make it so we can swap out our text easily later. We can just uh, duplicate this layer, change the text, and then we'll have the transition work for, uh, for a, an, an entirely different word. Uh, and it will be very quick. 
Uh, so let's go ahead and um, hit Command Shift C to pre-compose it. Uh, you could also go up to Layer and pre-compose if you want to go the long way. Uh, so Command Shift C, pre-compose it. I'll call this text. Okay, once I've got that um, pre-composed, the next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to drag the text below the vertical wipe on our timeline here. And uh, we're going to do another track mat. So we're going to uh, select the track mat option for the text and we're going to set it to alpha mat vertical wipe. Uh, we don't see it right now. Uh, let me close this type box here so we can get some more room. Uh, but now you can actually see that the type is um, using that as a transition now, which looks great. Okay, um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to select these two layers uh, on the bottom here, the mechanical pieces and the vertical wipe. Select both of those. Um, you can either just uh, drag a marquee around it or you can um, hit shift and select both. Um, and I'm going to hit command shift C and we're going to pre-compose this. I'll just call this um, pieces. And uh, I'm going to duplicate this text layer right here. So i uh, just hit Command-D to duplicate it. Drag the text layer above the pieces layer there. And we want to turn off the track mat for this uh, layer because when you duplicate a layer, it also uh, duplicates the track mat option for it. So we'll turn that off. Okay, now we're going to set our track mat for our pieces to the text layer above it. So let's go to alpha mat text. And uh, right now we don't see anything, and that's because the, the transition on the bottom for the pieces is happening at the exact same time as, as this uh, top layer here. So in order to uh, see that, we're going to grab um, uh, the vertical wipe on the very top, and uh, we're actually going to push it back in time just a little bit. And once you do that, now you're going to start seeing uh, that those mechanical pieces uh, showing through there. So if I just do a, uh, let me set the end point of this so we don't have to render the five seconds of nothing at the beginning. So I'll uh, go to about there, I'll hit B, uh, which sets the work area start there. And I'll go to the end and hit N on the keyboard and that sets the work area end. I'll go ahead and do a, a RAM preview of this and we'll check this out. Okay, so uh, there you go. Uh, this is basically the nuts and bolts of the transition. Um, but uh, we want to kick this up a notch because uh, we want to make things look nice here. So um, let's go ahead and find a texture for this mechanical uh, text right here so, uh, so we can actually try to make it maybe look like metal. Um, so let's uh, go to the, my favorite um, website for uh, just um, free textures. Uh, it's called cgtextures.com and I'll put the link below. So CG Textures is an awesome website uh, to just get uh, a ton of free textures from it. I use it all the time in my projects. Uh, so what we're gonna look for is we're gonna look for metal scratches, if I can spell. Let me try that again metal scratches and uh, there's one particular one that I found that I liked a lot it's this guy right here uh, so scroll down until you see uh, this guy right here um, he's the one that we want and uh, you're, you are going to want to uh, have an account uh, in order to, to download this stuff uh, so if you don't have an account go ahead and make one really quick uh, download this texture right here and uh, bring that into After Effects and go ahead and download the large size of it because uh, it's going to work best for what we're doing here. So let's hop back into After Effects here. And I already got that downloaded, so I'm going to drop that in. Okay, uh, let's see here. Let's jump into our text layer. So I'm just going to double click on the text to go into that pre comp. I'm going to drag my metal scratches into our timeline here. And uh, maybe I'll shrink this down a little bit. Maybe like so. And uh, we're going to set another track mat here. So uh, track mat the mechanical layer above it. Select alpha mat. And now we have our um, text being cut out of this metal texture, which looks pretty great. 
I'm just gonna add one tiny little uh, um, layer style to this just to uh, add a little bit more uh, dimension to this type here. So if I select this layer, uh, the metal scratches layer, go to layer, and uh, we're gonna go to layer styles, and we're gonna put a little bevel emboss on this. Um, now bevel emboss can get really cheesy, and by default it looks pretty ugly. Uh, so we gotta adjust these settings here. Let's go to chisel soft, and maybe decrease the size to like two or so. And a lot of times uh, I turn off the shadow on this um, because I just want the highlight on it. I don't want the shadow. So if I go down to shadow opacity and I just make that zero. Um, so now I'm only getting this tiny little uh, edge highlight around the the um, around the corners of the of the type, and that looks great there. If I shut that off and turn it on, you can just see you can see a little uh, just a little bit more life uh, be put into the text there. Okay, so once we got that, uh, let's go ahead and uh, hit Command C on the metal scratches layer, and we're going to go back into our vertical wipe layer, and uh, we're actually going to put the the same um, texture onto this pieces layer that we got. Because right now, if we go into the pieces layer, just double click on that, um, it's it's just plain really. Uh, there's no real texture to it, so <clears throat> so let's add some texture to it. Uh, so if I go ahead and I select both of these layers and I hit Command Shift C, we're going to pre-compose them. Um, so I'll I'll uh, I already hit Command C before, so I'm just going to hit Command V to paste that metal scratches layer in there. And uh, we're going to put the metal scratches layer below, and it's already set to um, alpha mat. Uh, because it uses the same track mat settings, uh, but if it's not, uh, set it to alpha mat for the pre-comp above it. Now we're not seeing it right now, and the reason is because the top layer is turned on, this eyeball is turned on, but if I turn it off, um, now uh, we see our texture coming through there, and this is just going to add a little bit uh, more interest to the transition. It's going to make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, but you know what? I don't think I want the layer style on it because it's bringing the that bevel that we put on there. Uh, it's bringing that into uh, this layer here. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the layer styles for this because I don't want to see that um, bevel on this layer. So if we go back into vertical wipe, uh, and uh, this is often the way I like to work up and down in my pre-comps here. Uh, so this shows like the hierarchy. To the left is the very top pre-comp, and to the right is the very bottom pre-comp. So if I select a vertical wipe, it'll bring me back to uh, my layer there. And that's just a good tip when you've got tons and tons of layers and you don't want to have to either look at this bar that scrolls uh, sometimes a very long way if you have uh, hundreds of comps or down here uh, that it can get a little slow working like that. So I like to work up here. Okay, so our, our transition is starting to come to life here. And uh, one thing I want to do is um, I want to go ahead and make this pieces layer. I want to darken it a little bit because uh, I want I want the uh, the second part of the transition to be a lighter sort of metal, and these first little like girders or what whatever you want to call these little pieces here. Um, I want these to be darker. So I'll go up to Effect and go to Color Correction Curves, and I'm just going to drop the the white point down a little bit, and now I'm also just going to uh, drop it the mids down a little bit. And uh, this is just going to create a little bit more dimension to it. Um, I like how that looks a lot there. Let's go ahead and do a little preview of this and see how our type looks. All right, so this is uh, essentially the transition there. Uh, but we're, go we're gonna take this a lot farther than this, but this is basically the mechanical build transition. And uh, I think it's pretty awesome, personally. I mean, I'm biased, but uh, you know, it's a, it's a, it's, when you work with type a lot, you I kind of run into problems of like, okay, well, how am I going to animate this type on in a way that uh, looks interesting? Because uh, kind of run into a lot of dead ends a lot of times when you're working with type, and you kind of feel like you run out of options. Um, so this is just one more option of uh, transitioning type in, and uh, I think it's pretty classy. 
Okay, um, so let's go ahead and make a new comp that we're going to be dragging this type uh, into. So I'm going to go up to new composition. And I'm working at half of HD, so I'm working 640 by 360. You can work 1280 by 720 or however big you want to work. Uh, 24 frames a second and um, 10 seconds long is good. Uh, so we'll click OK. And so I'm going to go ahead and drop my vertical wipe. Actually, I'm going to rename this now just to uh, mechanical. So I'm going to drop that into this new comp. And uh, we have a lot of dead space before the transition comes on. Um, so it starts around there. So I'll just, um, I'm going to hit uh, option and the left bracket symbol on the keyboard, uh, which is going to just shorten it, shorten the time there to wherever the cursor is. You could also just drag this, um, but shortcuts make life easier. Um, so, okay, once I got that in there, I'm going to hit S on my layer to bring up the scale. I'm just going to drop it down a bit so it's fitting on our screen. Okay, um, next thing we'll do, we'll go ahead and add a camera. This new camera. 35 is good. Um, I've got to hit F4 to bring up my 3D toggles here. Um, so I'll select the 3D option, make it into a 3D layer. Okay, um, let's see, maybe I'll drop this down just a little bit so we can uh, push our camera in. So let's go to the very beginning at zero. We'll hit P on the camera layer, set a keyframe on the position. Let's go to maybe eight seconds or so, and we're going to push the camera forward. That looks pretty good there. Okay, so now it's going to be the camera is going to be pushing in as the uh, text transitions on. Looking pretty good. Um, the next thing I'm going to do, and this is what I like to do to a lot of my cameras, um, is I'm going to go to my orientation options here under transform. I'm going to hit the option key or the alt key on the um, stopwatch next to orientation. And that's going to bring up the expression dialog. I'm going to type in wiggle, open parentheses. Um, let's go with maybe 0.5 comma 0.5. And what this is going to do is it's going to add an, a, a nice um, a nice wiggle on the orientation as uh, as the camera is pushing in. Uh, it gives it more of like a handheld feel, um, which I like. Because uh, things can get kind of rigid when you're working with the camera in After Effects, you know, uh, things can look move a little too linearly. Um, so this just adds a, a, a little bit of gentle movement to the camera, and I think that looks nice. Okay, um, you know, a, a lot of times uh, when I'm working with this uh, transition here, I kind of wanted it to. Um, start really fast uh, and then and then get slow because uh, right now it's just moving at the same speed the whole time <clears throat> so uh, what I'd like I like to do before is um, I go to somewhere around here maybe when it's like two-thirds of the transition transition is done I'm gonna right click on our mechanical layer and I'm gonna go to time and I'm gonna go to enable time remapping and I'm gonna go ahead and set a keyframe on the time remap option there uh, at about two-thirds of the way done. I'm going to go to the beginning and set a keyframe at the uh, right before the transition starts there. And what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to drag this new keyframe that I made um, kind of close to uh, the second keyframe there. I'm going to go ahead and hit B on the keyboard to move our endpoint now to uh, to that first keyframe there. I'm going to select this second keyframe here and go to keyframe uh, uh, assistant. Oh, I'm, I'm right clicking on this uh, keyframe, by the way. So right click on that keyframe, go to keyframe assistant, and go to easy ease in. And what that's going to do is it's going to have it start out fast and then kind of slow down as it, uh, as it gets to this keyframe here. So let's go ahead and uh, check out how this looks here. So you can see that it's starting out kind of quickly and then it slows down as it gets um, to that keyframe there. 
And uh, depending on the speed of your music and the edits, uh, this might be a good option um, to bring your text in if you want it to be coming in a little bit quicker. Um, that looks pretty good there. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, maybe a little bit before four seconds, we'll uh, take this mechanical layer and uh, I'm going to hit P on it, and I'm going to set a keyframe for the position. If I hit U now, um, I'm going to be able to see all the uh, keyframes that I have on my layer. Um, so if you hit U again, uh, it's going to fold them all up. So just hit U, um, and we'll be able to see all of our uh, keyframes that we've got. I'm going to go ahead maybe six frames or so. And I'm going to drag the Z option on my text, and I'm going to have it come flying towards the camera. And I have, I'm going to have it uh, pass by the camera there. And I'm going to go ahead and select that first keyframe right there, and I'm just going to hit F9 on it, which is going to make it an easy ease keyframe. And uh, so we're, this is just going to have the text fly by so we can transition our next uh, piece of text there. Let's go ahead and turn on our motion blur so that we can actually uh, um, get some, some of the blur going on on this really quick moving text here. So if I select the uh, motion blur switch for the mechanical layer here, and then I also uh, select the enable motion blur option there, now we're going to be able to see our motion blur. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to set the out point there and go ahead and do a preview. All right, so here's our uh, first part of our animation here. So we're using that cool um, mechanical build transition and then the type flies by. Looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and add a background to this, um, to this scene here because it's looking a little boring. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, drag in the metal scratches layer into, uh, into my composition. And uh, I'm gonna make this 3D here. Now I'm going to hit the P option on the on the metal scratches, and I'm going to push this back. Um, I'm going to just enter in a thousand. So this is going to push this back in our scene. So the type is going to be uh, more. Uh, it's going to be closer towards the camera, and the background is going to be um, further away. Let's go ahead and hit S and shrink down the scale. Looks about good there. Um, this is way too light right now. We can't even read our text. So let's go ahead and add a curves layer to that background. I'm going to drop the white point of it down pretty significantly um, so we can read our type here. There we go. It looks about good. Um, Let's see here. Let's go ahead and add a vignette to this so uh, we can make our text pop a little bit more. Go ahead and go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer. And we're going to add a Curves layer to this as well. Um, and I'm just going to drop down uh, the mids a bit here. Now we're going to go up to this Mask option here. And uh, if you hold down on the click and hold down, you can go to the Ellipse tool there. And if I just double click now on that ellipse tool, it's going to make an ellipse the shape of our layer there. Uh, we want to go ahead and set the mask mode to subtract. And if I twirl down the mask option here, um, I can get to the feather and maybe I'll put like 200 there. Uh, maybe it's a bit much, maybe 100. And so this is just going to darken the edges and bring the focus into our type. OK, that looks pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and add a light to our scene here uh, to just uh, try try to keep kicking this scene up a notch here. Um, let's go to layer and new. Let's go to light. And uh, maybe like 110% is going to be good. I've got a little bit of color in this. I always like to use a little bit of color in my lights there. I'll turn cast shadows on and we'll click OK. Um, Let's see here. It looks like um, 
We might, I, right now I have the, the fall off turned on and I like working with fall off a lot. Uh, this is an option that's new in 5.5. So uh, if you don't see this, that's uh, probably because you're working on an, an older version of After Effects. Uh, but if you do have this fall off option, um, I'm gonna increase it to maybe, let's try 1500. That looks pretty good there, I think. Looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and um, uh, create some shadows for these text layers here. Uh, if I hit AA now on the uh, mechanical layer, if I hit A twice, uh, it's going to bring up my material options. Um, and I'm going to want to turn on cast shadows. I'm going to want to make that on there. So now we got our shadows in our scene here. So if I drag this light around now, um, the shadows will move accordingly. Uh, but our shadows are a little too intense right now. So I'm going to hit AA on the light there. Um, let's see here. Let's go to Shadow Diffusion. Maybe we'll put that to like 5. That looks pretty good there. Um, let's move the shadow darkness. Let's take it down to like 50%. That looks about right there. Let's see. The light is way too close to our type, which is making our shadow way too big. So if I hit P on the light and I just drag the Z option, um, if I push it a little bit more into the negative here, which is going to make the light move towards us, uh, it's going to make our shadow a little bit smaller there. Maybe keep going a little bit. That's probably about good there. Um, now I kind of like I kind of like the the idea that this is one of those. For some reason, and this is this is this might be a cliche, but in like every uh, a dramatic like rock video or like metal video, there's always lights, and they always seem to just be swinging for uh, for no apparent reason, really. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and and add some swinging lights into our scene here uh, to just uh, just add a little a uh, little bit of secondary animation going on uh, in our scene here. So I'm going to move it over just to kind of the left corner over here. I'm going to set a keyframe for the position. I'm going to zoom into my timeline here by pushing the plus key on the keyboard. Uh, you can also just drag this option down here, but I like using the plus and minus keys. I'm going to drag this um, keyframe to the beginning of our timeline. Um, now I'm going to move it all the way to the opposite side here, to this corner. Okay, so now our light is moving, uh, but I want it to be kind of like swinging. So I, I, I'm gonna go to the middle of the keyframes there. And I'm just gonna drag it down. And this is gonna create a little bit of an arc as it moves along. Um, I have my, my uh, interpolation set to linear, which is why it's a straight line and then a straight line here. Yours might be set to Bezier, but if it's not set to Bezier, um, Go ahead and right click on that keyframe, go to keyframe interpolation and go to spatial interpolation. And we're gonna go ahead and set that to Bezier. <clears throat> so now it's uh, gonna create that nice curve there. I'm gonna right click on this keyframe and I'm gonna go to uh, rove across time. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna make sure that the, mo the motion is really smooth uh, between these two keyframes. I'm gonna select the first and the last keyframe here. And I, I'm gonna hit F9 on those, which is gonna make them easy ease. So now my light is gonna be uh, swinging back and forth there. Uh, now, once it gets to the end here, I want it to swing back the other way. So I'm gonna go ahead, select all three of these keyframes, hit Command C. And I'm gonna move uh, maybe two frames after uh, our, our keyframes there, and I'm gonna hit, hit Command V. Um, but I need to reverse these keyframes. Uh, I need to time reverse them. So with all of them selected, right click and go to, um, let's see here. Hmm, what do we go to here? Oh, here we go. You go to keyframe assistant and go to time reverse keyframes. And what that's gonna do is it's now, once it gets to the end there, now it's just gonna do the exact opposite thing. And I could do the, the same thing again. Um, uh, at the end here, but I actually don't have to time reverse them anymore. I can actually just select those first three keyframes and hit Command C and Command V. So now I, I just created a nice um, swinging light effect. So let's go ahead and check this out and see how this looks.
All right, so let's check this out. Okay, I am noticing that that light is uh, swinging a little faster than I want and it's being a little distracting right now. Now I wanna make all of these keyframes slower. Now it's it does seem like it would be kind of a pain in the butt to go ahead and move all these keyframes, but there's a really easy option to just stretch all of these together. I'm gonna zoom out on my timeline a little bit. So with all of them selected, go ahead and uh, let's see, which key is it here? them selected yeah that's what it is um, so with all of them selected and selecting the very right keyframe and holding alt so you want to hold alt or the option key uh, on a Mac um, and just drag it to the right there and this will stretch all of the keyframes um, it's gonna stretch them all together and in relation to each other so I'm gonna stretch this out a little bit and uh, I'm gonna say that that's probably gonna be fine there I think I'm gonna go ahead and make the shadow darkness maybe a little bit less intense because it's being a little distracting right now, I think. So we'll bump that down a bit. Um, one last thing we'll do to the light is we'll add a little bit of the flicker to it. Um, yet again, one of those cliches that if you watch enough dramatic rock videos or metal videos, uh, there's always flickering lights for some reason because people can't afford good light bulbs these days, I guess. So uh, if you go to the intensity option here and hold option or alt and click on the stopwatch, we're gonna type in wiggle. And if you haven't noticed, uh, the wiggle expression is probably my favorite expression. And uh, so we're gonna type wiggle, open parentheses. Um, let's go with five comma, um, maybe 12. We'll type that in there. Let's take a look. All right, so here we are. Um, all right, uh, this is good for the first uh, part of our text here. We're gonna go ahead and um, duplicate the, that text layer. And uh, now there, there are problems when you're duplicating layers inside of After Effects. And um, if you wanna check out a good tutorial that I did about that, it's called Solving the Pre-Comping Nightmare. Um, go ahead and check that out uh, because it's gonna it's gonna both explain why uh, uh, duplicating pre comps is an issue and it's also gonna show you this um, cool little preset here uh, that I have here called the True Comp Duplicator. I'll show you how to download and install that. So uh, take a break. Uh, go ahead and download the True Comp Duplicator and come on back here once you've got that. And uh, okay, so once you've got that downloaded. Um, we are going to be duplicating our mechanical layer here. And so you gotta select the mechanical layer there, go over to True Comp Duplicator, and I'm just gonna add a suffix. I'm gonna, uh, um, I'm gonna go ahead and write maniacs, because I like that. I like my mechanical maniacs. <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, so once we got that, we'll go ahead and hit duplicate. And so now we've got a new layer called mechanical um, underscore maniacs because I put underscore mani maniacs as my uh, suffix. I'm gonna hit return on that layer there and I'm just going to uh, delete the mechanical part at the beginning because it gets a little confusing with all of those suffixes. Um, so uh, once we've got that duplicated, um, I'm gonna close up some of this stuff here to clean it up. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this mechanical layer here um, and once I've got that duplicated, I'm gonna drag this Maniacs layer here. Um, you wanna make sure that mechanical layer is selected. Grab it and hit Option and drop it right on top of that mechanical layer there. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna replace it um, exactly where it is in there so it will be at the same spot in the composition so you don't have to like reposition things, which is really nice. So uh, let's drill into our Maniacs layer here. And we need to change our type here. So we gotta go into our, our text layer here. And we gotta uh, change this type right here. And one of the coolest things about uh, working with the type this way, um, with these sort of pre-comps, is that you don't have to change anything except for go in and uh, put your type in there. Um, so now if we go back to comp one there, now I've got both uh, Mechanical and Maniacs in there with that same cool transition there. I'm gonna hit U on these layers here so I can uh, time these things up. 
Okay, so I want the uh, Maniacs layer to be coming in right as this layer is uh, passing the screen here. So I'm going to drag my layer until it's uh, the transition is just about starting. And things are kind of starting to chug right now on my poor little laptop, which can't handle all of these awesome transitions. Um, so it's going to be slowing down a little bit here. So uh, that layer is now going to be uh, starting as it passes. And you know what? I think I want um, that transition. It's, it's still a little slow for me. I want to speed it up a little bit. So I'm going to grab that first uh, keyframe on the time remap there, and I'm going to drag it forward a few keyframes there, just because I want that, that transition to be pretty quick. Let's see here. Um, maybe a bit too much. There we go. This That'll be fine for now. And uh, let's see here. All right, uh, let's just keep adding some more uh, finishing touches to this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a new adjustment layer. Now I'm going to put a glow on this a little bit to just kind of make our text pop a little bit more. So if I uh, create a new adjustment layer, I'm going to go down to stylize, going to go to glow. And I'm going to turn up the threshold a little bit. Let's see here, maybe about there. Increase the radius maybe like 15. Um, I'm going to bring the intensity down maybe to like 0.5 or so. It's kind of interesting looking there. Maybe we'll bring the radius down to like 12. Yeah, that looks that looks interesting there. I'm going to add one more movement to the camera too. So I'm going to go ahead and hit R on the camera to bring up the rotation. I'm going to go to the very beginning of the comp and hit a uh, keyframe for the Z rotation. I'm going to drag it to the end of our uh, our working space here. And maybe I'll put in like six. Okay, I gotta close down these text options here. Clutter in my screen. Um, let's go back to our preview options here. And let's check this out. All right, so here's our uh, animation so far. And uh, I think it looks great. Um, so let's just keep adding little tweaks to this and uh, you know, let's put the finishing details on this. Um, I think I want the animation to start out um, with a quick pull back um, from the, the text there. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my mechanical there. Um, let's see here. Got to find the right moment where I want to start pulling back from maybe about there. So I'm going to set a keyframe, pull it forward one, two, three, maybe five frames or so. I'm going to drag the, the text towards the camera. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm running into an issue because it's going, uh, it's going in front of the light there, which it means it's, it's turning black there. So maybe rather than moving the text forward like that, I'll actually just do it to the camera there. So I'll set a keyframe instead for the camera and drag that one, two, three, you know, five frames forward or, or so. Um, now I'm going to push the camera in uh, till it's like right on the text there. And you know, I, I think I might actually uh, bump the camera up. So I'm just pushing on the arrow keys there. And I want to bump it until it's like, I want it to start at like the bright point of, of the type there. Um, so that it's a little more uh, a bit of a flash at the start of the uh, transition there. Okay, um, let's go ahead and set an easy ease on the uh, second keyframe there. Smooth out that animation. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the same thing at the end there so that um, it's kind of like bookends uh, to this animation here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and push it into the text again at the end, setting a keyframe, going like five frames forward or so. and pushing the camera in again and that 
it's pushing into the right spot there, which is good. Now I'm gonna uh, right click on that second to last keyframe and go to easy out, easy ease out there. So it's uh, it's gradual on the outgoing animation there. Um, let's see, uh, let's do one more um, uh, filter to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a new um, new adjustment layer, and I'm gonna uh, put. Um, there's a plugin that I use to create sort of a fisheye effect, and uh, it's from Francois Tarlier, and it's called Cubic Lens Distortion, and I'll, I'll put the link to that below as well, so you can go ahead and download that. Uh, I did a tutorial on that too, so I'll, I'll put the link for that. Uh, so I'm gonna add the Cubic Lens Distortion uh, filter there. Let's see, which way do I wanna push this? I, I've got two options. You can either make kind of a fisheye look uh, by pushing uh, the distortion into the positive, or you can create this sort of weird, um, sort of weird, whoa there, this is going a little crazy here. Um, or if you push it the other way here, you can actually see that the edges will kind of start tearing as they get to the uh, sides there. Like the image is kind of like wrapping around you, which is uh, pretty interesting looking sometimes. Uh, but I want to go with the fisheye effect there, so I think I'm going to go to 0 0.05 for the distortion. And once you do that, you got to scale up the image here so that it um, fills the frame there. Oh, one more thing to mention. Uh, I, I've heard that this plugin might not work with CS6. Um, so in case it doesn't happen to work with CS6, uh, there's another option here. Uh, uh, CC lens. Um, this is what I used to use, uh, and it does it does the job. Um, but I just like the other plugin because it has more options on it. Uh, so you can adjust these things right here. Um, so you can you can use the CC lens to get the same um, sort of look. But I don't uh, like that as much. So I'm going to turn back on this option here. And so you can see it's kind of making uh, <clears throat> it's kind of making things bulge in the middle here, which gives it that cool uh, fisheye look there that I like a lot. Uh, maybe one last thing we'll do here is put a little bit of color correction on this. Um, you know, you really got to color correct, uh, or uh, you know, color correct might not be the right word. I think color grade is a better option here because uh, we're just adding a. Uh, we're just adding a, a whole new color scheme to this. It's not like we're trying to like correct a bad tint to it. So we'll call it color grading here. I'll go ahead and go to new adjustment layer. And I'm gonna uh, make this uh, a curves layer. Let's try and warm this up a bit here. <clears throat> so uh, maybe I'll bring up the red just a pinch there. Uh, bump up the red. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and uh, drop the blue a little bit so we make it kind of this brownish color. I'll go to the RGB <coughs> channel and uh, do, uh, do a nice little S curve to add some contrast in here. Yeah, I think that's, um, you know, things are looking a little bit too bright now for me, so maybe I'll drop it down a little bit more. Uh, one of the problems I'm noticing uh, after we added that fisheye effect is that um, the when you add it, it kind of blows up the image there. So now the mechanical is kind of it's kind of filling up too much of the frame there. So rather than pushing and pulling the camera back, uh, which would be the hard way to do it, um, if we go down to uh, camera options, we can actually just pull the zoom of the camera back a little bit, and so uh, this will just make it fit in the frame a little bit better. Uh, so let's see here, let's go ahead and uh, check this out. All right, so here is our animation. And uh, I think it looks awesome. I'd say we're done here, but there's one last thing that I want to mention. Um, and this is, uh, this is just one of those uh, real fine little details that uh, I think makes a big difference here. Now I'm noticing as it's zooming in really fast, uh, let's go ahead and find one of the points where it's like really, uh, it's really moving fast here. You see how you can see all these uh, 
a, a little stair steps between the motion blur here. Um, I don't like how that looks, and I think it, it ruins uh, the motion, the really fast moving motion there. Um, so the way you fix that is go up to composition, go to composition settings, and um, it's the way you solve it is by increasing your samples per frame. So right now it's set to 16, so it's got 16 steps to that motion blur. So if I increase it to like 40, you'll notice that it'll smooth out. You see how nice and silky smooth that is there? Now keep in mind that this is really gonna increase your render time, so this is a, a, a good thing to do right before you uh, render out your video. Um, it's not very good to do while you're, uh, while you're working with it. Um, so that's just a little tip uh, that's gonna make your animation look a lot better. This might be hard to, to notice. Um, maybe if I go ahead and put a generate fill onto that background layer there. Um, do you see how you can kind of, uh, now that I made the, that pieces background layer there red, um, you can actually notice that those pieces are poking out uh, behind the text a little bit there. And uh, this can just make your text look a little, a little funky, um, not as clean and crisp as it should. Uh, so there's a way to fix that, and the way to fix that is to select the text layer above the pieces there. And we're going to go up to Matte, and we're going to go to Simple Choker. And what this is going to do is this is just going to choke in on the, the type there a little bit. If I put it to 1, that should do it. Okay, so you now, now you see how all of that, um, all of those little, uh, little pieces went away there. Uh, what the text mat does is I can actually put it into the negative and it'll actually grow that text mat. Um, uh, yeah, but if I put it to one there, that'll get that'll get rid of them. And that's uh, that's just a good way to clean up your type there. It's something good to keep in mind uh, to make your type look its best. Um, so uh, basically that's it, guys. That's the tutorial. Uh, I hope you have a lot of fun with this preset. And uh, if you do some cool work with this, go ahead and post a link below. Uh, I'd love to see it. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye.